If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It already says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and you get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive a review. Positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, merch, indeed. And the child shall have, lead them. Yes, a child shall the lead child them. child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes. Uh, the second song on our list here, the Epic Underground is our DJ. That means we have multiple DJs to get Correct. today working together Correct. to create this list for us. It's an alliance. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this song was, uh, there was a winner of Asia and Oceana Pole, and they they chose this one. Okay. Okay, you want to read that? That it looks like it's Tanger Calvary. Calvary in Thousands is the name of this band slash song. And I am going to um, find the lyrics. I have the lyrics, babe. Yeah, but I want the crowd to see them. Oh, right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Don't so Don't you think it's important that, that the people get to see the lyrics? Hmm? Have you thought they, about that? Or are you just they seem thinking to about like yourself? It. I would do myself. My selfishness yeah. selfishness um so i'm just gonna pull up the comment section here they yeah, are from mongolia talk, talk, oh talk really people are talk they to, really talk to the people i i am i am somebody's talking. from mongolia I, I, maybe the band the band is mongolian holy moly okay this should be even more interesting all right i have the lyrics right there they're very nice for everybody to see. <laughs> and, okay, let's go. Tanger Calvary. You'll have to wait and see. The time has arrived. Let's go. Time has arrived. Let's, let's do go. it. Oh.
Damn. Wow. That went a lot of places again. Another uh, song that went a lot of places. That yeah. vocal style is so interesting. The, yeah, yeah. Somebody called it. He's like, yo, if they're Mongolian, they're going to do that, uh, what did he call the throat. it? The, the throat. The throat something. singing stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, that shit was crazy, bro. I, I really enjoyed that song. Um, I I enjoyed, somebody said like instrumentally it was like superior. And uh, I think I agree. Like instrumentally mm. it was great. I don't, what was that? And all the artists looked like they were into it. What was that um, instrument, that stringed in? Was that a cello? Oh, I didn't even see it. There were a couple times there was a stringed instrument. They they, they had some... Um, yeah, I didn't see it. They had some... Oh, yeah, the production here... The, the production here was top-notch. Yes. It was a cello or it was a folk instrument, but they did really good with it. And, and it kind of had that, like... I'm going to sound so ignorant here, but that Asian feel, you know, like that, <laughs> you know, uh, it, yeah, had that like uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon type uh, feel, you know, with if you if you know, like Asian music in the movies, uh, which well, I'm was, not familiar. So it was a big well, I, you know, I used to watch all them kung fu movies and all that. And, you know, you, it was always a good guy. He'd show up. He was always drinking tea at the Shaolin Temple and shit, trying to be all peaceful and shit. You know what I'm saying? And so you'd hear the... Dun, Somebody dun, would push dun, him dun, to the dun, next level. And then here comes some bad guy showing up. He's like, Ji Song Sven! You killed my father in the fourth generation of the sixth dynasty or the whatever. And now I've come to avenge you. And then the good guy's like drinking his tea and shit. Like, hey man, just peace, bro. Zen. And the guy's like, no, I'm going to murder you. So he goes, "Hala!" And then the... And then the, the uh, the master goes, ha! Huh! You know, and he's like, let me he's finish my tea. His tea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he how are, how are you saying he's the bad guy? He killed the man's father. Yeah, but the guy was, you know, the, obviously the guy's dad probably deserved it and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, your father was an evil warlord. Oh. And I had to. <laughs> I had to do it. You're being irrational. Let me finish my tea. <laughs> <laughs> shout, okay. out, shout out to uh, my kung fu movies, bro. But that's how that shit was, bro. So, like, when I would hear that, when I'd hear that sound, I was like, oh, okay. Like, I'm, I'm back in the Shaolin Temple, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know I what I'm saying? Uh, so Dave, Dave said, I wasn't a fan of the singing. The music was phenomenal. Um, yeah, I don't like that throaty sound either. It reminds me of like when somebody has like th some problem with their, their throat and they can't talk sort of. anymore. Yeah. And then they have that thing. It's kind of sounded like one of those. Okay. So the name of that instrument is a Maureen core or more commonly the horse head fiddle. Hmm. It's amazing to me that people from all over the planet who've never met each other one are able to create musical instruments and two to pretty much follow the same exact music theories yes as, yes as people that's true all the way across I actually the world. never thought of that yeah it's it's just it's very human beings are very 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 fascinating so there's a standard then um i love the throat singing personally it reminds me of rammstein yeah, I, I, I like the throat singing a little bit in, in short doses, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, maybe they're trying to remain true to their ethnicity. Maybe that's a big thing. And if it is, then I, I respect that. Yeah, I, I respect it. But as far as like in metal, like it's the thing about metal is it's about the transfer of energy. And so oh. when you have a vehicle that is, you know, getting you somewhere, which is, you know, what their music is. When you have when you have a cadence or a vocal style that doesn't track with it's it felt it felt like the vocals were about two miles, you know what I'm saying behind 100%, the one hundred percent. Um, but it's it's uh, I still I still. But if they're being true to their heritage and their people, then even if it's two miles behind, in my opinion too, it, I can roll with it and respect it. Yeah, like I, I respect that. Um, but as far as like a metal song itself, mm -hmm. you know, I think it hurts it a little bit. I in agree. thousands, the cavalry marched on along with the neighing horses. Our banners covered the boundless welkin. First of all, did you notice the guy's face when he was singing it or doing that throaty thing? No. He looked like he was really, really into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, rest in peace <laughs> to the homie because apparently he died. Really? Yep. <sighs> Jeez, um, um, he didn't look very old either. Our, yeah, no, he wasn't that old, apparently. Our, our drum thunders across the vast earth with the guidance mm. of mountains from afar. 
Sense the will of great nature, urging our horses like lightning. Through rain and storm we ride. These guys are, you know, <clears throat> I could see this probably being a little psalm during the Genghis Khan era. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Genghis Khan is probably the most, he's probably eating up the most land in human history as, as a single person. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Genghis Khan, like, he wasn't playing around, bro. So I could, like, this is this is part of their heritage and you know it's cool i love this because it's usually the europeans who are very good at looking back at their heritage and and talking about the old times and the old ways you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying and, yep. and represent and I, I love when i love when those bands do that man because obviously coming from from uh you know my context in the bronx and all that we were so disconnected from our fathers like our literal fathers and as well as our ancestors so coming into metal like, mm -hmm. you don't hear this in hip-hop. Like, mm -hmm. you don't hear... I mean, you do, but you, it's a very specialized niche. It's mm -hmm. called conscious rap. Oh. Right? So, like, you you know, you, you had a bunch of conscious rappers, you know, and that's that's where the, the term woke came, came from. You had a bunch of conscious rappers that were, you know, Common Sense and a couple other guys that would talk about, you know, our heritage and things and like that. Real. But but Just yeah. the heritage or your heritage and real issues now well they would just they just you know it's more the black identity stuff nation of islam stuff yeah. type of thing we were you know blah 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 but like it, it's it's not like it is in metal in metal it's like there's a real thorough celebration of your heritage there's a real like connection to the past and all that that i that i i really mm -hmm. admire so when these guys got their hand, hand at it they're representing their folks i think that's amazing i think that's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing yep <clears throat> Um, so there isn't much to say lyrically, um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, like I said, I could definitely see this coming up as a, like, um, you know, Psalm of Genghis Khan. Mm -hmm. Apparently Genghis Khan's I, DNA is in almost all of humanity. I, I know. I, I've heard of that. That's <laughs> really crazy. Wow. This man, this man was, was, uh, <laughs> he was not playing games, bro. It's just war. It's just jihad and girls. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That was his big motivator. Holy moly. It's hard to like comprehend. Like I can kind of understand it because if you're trying to like conquer and take over, like, yeah, if you spread, spread your seed all over the place, then they're all going to be technically your people. But at the same time, like the idea of having just a bunch of children all over the place that you're never going to know or talk to, like that's a very bizarre thought. Yeah, it's really weird, you know, like, if a person kills one person, we're like, yo, that guy's a murderer, fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. But then if a person kills, like, hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people, it's like, yeah, this guy's a conqueror. Like, I could get away with wearing a Genghis Khan shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, like, we went to our shirt guy, and he, and we put Genghis Khan on there, like, I guarantee you, and we started selling that shit, it would sell. Like, Genghis Khan, comparatively speaking, was probably top three of the most evil people on the planet. <laughs> I mean, the guy was a serial rapist, serial murderer. And, like, it, it, it just... I've always been fascinated by that. By who is a horrible, terrible, ugly villain in history and who is looked on as a hero and then who is just... You know, when you talk yeah. about Genghis Khan... You almost never get the emotional, like, this evil motherfucker. It's just like, yo, he conquered everything and everybody's got his DNA and nobody's really upset at him about it. But then you got other people who did all types of evil shit and it's like, it's the end of the world. And I just don't understand, like, what is the arithmetic? Like, what determines who we like in the history, in history yeah. and who we don't like in history? Yeah. But honestly, I could show up here with a Genghis Khan shirt, make it, little, make it real cool, and, like, nobody would have a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I would. I mean, yeah, I guess. He raped a bunch of women? What do you mean you guess? Yeah, but for some reason he gets away with it. I, I, I don't... Look, there's a franchise of Mongolian barbecue places called the Genghis Grill, and it's delicious. <laughs> no way in hell they could get away with Hitler's hamburgers. Right! That's all that's what I'm saying. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh, look at look gosh. at Loveland. Genghis Khan and the Mongol invasion stopped when they entered Poland. Don't fuck with the Poles. <laughs> <laughs> long live Poland. Yep, long live <laughs> <Fuck> that. Poland. <laughs> then Polish people, Nergal was like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that. 
fuck out of here. It's in front of the line. Who the fuck out of here? Fuck a Genghis Khan. That's what he used to say in the hood. Really? Oh, he'd be like, oh, yeah, that nigga's blood, bro. He'd be like, man, fuck a blood. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but then they got too close. Hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> Good to how see you. Doing? How you doing? Let's answer. Let's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, so this one, for me, is a little tricky to rate because I liked it, but I didn't like that vocal style. So it, like, went to 9.8, and then it went back down to 9.2. 9.2 it is. Let us let me see. And when you kill a man, you're a murderer. Kill many, and you're a conqueror. Kill them all. Oh, you're a god. Oh, that's brilliant. That's good. Dave really generally is not that good lyrically, but that was brilliant. Um... Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give this song a... Damn, what did you give it? A 9.2. I can't give it a 9.2 because that instrumentalism was so crazy. I got to give it a 9.75. Ooh. If there was a segment where there was a cadence where the cadence matched the, the music, then I'd have probably pushed it up to a 10 because I respect the hell out of the throat singing. Um, I just couldn't give it a 10 because it wasn't really moving me like that. And I'm trying to be as honest as possible. So there we go, dear listener. There you are. Uh, having said that, dear listener, but everybody in the audience is like 10. Look at that. Necro's 10. I know, 10, tons of people. Zombies 10. I think Sean, Sean is 10. Look at all them 10s, bitches. Mm -hmm. So what do we know? What do we know, <laughs> dear listener? What I do know is that we've got another song right after this one. If you're just in regular YouTube land, you're missing it. You should like, share, comment, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll never miss another live stream again. Having said that, if you're in the stream, please stay. If you're out, do bad. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.